dear incredible public, <laughs> and especially you, dear amazing, daring, fantastic ladies, <laughs> and dear gentlemen too. <laughs> I hope you're not disappointed. It's not the blonde queen, it's the brunette who takes the stage. <laughs> To introduce you the blockchain technology, please be kind with her. She loves to talk. She's just not used to have so many people listening to her. I'm sure most of you read the bestseller Sapiens by Professor Noah Yuval Harari. The book is about the history of mankind and how Homo sapiens evolved from being hunter-gatherers to mastering artificial intelligence. One of the most powerful ideas defended by Harari is that compared to other living beings, humans thrive because they cooperate. Apparently, about two million years ago, there were multiple human species living at the same time on Earth, among them Homo sapiens, which means wise man. According to Harari, Homo sapiens basically outlived other species of humans because of their extraordinary ability to collaborate, to reach a common goal. Fast forward to 2008. A few million years later comes the blockchain. Blockchain is a technology. Some even call it a technological institution which enables the peer-to-peer -peer transfer of value without any intermediary. Now, if you're very interested in blockchain, please read the Bitcoin white paper written by Satoshi Nakamoto. It's only eight pages, and it explains everything. Now, for your eyes only, here's a definition in eight words. A distrib sorry, distributed, transparent, autonomous system for exchanging value. In a nutshell, imagine an immutable public registry, hence the digital ledger, constantly displaying data about who owns what and who does what transaction. Said transactions are locked in blocks, cryptographically linked together. That's the blockchain. The easiest and most intuitive way to think about blockchain is to compare it to an Excel spreadsheet. We all use Excel, don't we? More or less willingly. Now, think you share this spreadsheet with all your colleagues, and each one of you can open it and access a unique, live, and updated version of the sheet. Each line is a block, and the whole table is a chain of blocks, hence the blockchain. You can only add data to the chain by entering information on the next available line, and no one can erase past data. On the blockchain, this record is updated and replicated on every computer that uses the network. Thus, no centralized version of the information exists. No more middlemen. Banks, lawyers, land registries, contracts, passports are all heading toward obsolescence at a very high speed. Hosted by millions of computers at the same time, the data is transparent and cannot be corrupted as altering any data on the blockchain would mean to override the entire network. Indeed, when a lot of people have a copy of the same information, it becomes more difficult to cheat. Thus, the trust created by the network allows transaction to take place, to take place between any two people over the world. Our sapiens forefathers would have been proud of us. <laughs> blockchain is at the apex of cooperation. And it's not only about the community being too, too massive to be overturned. It's about aligning everyone's interest 
So nobody even thinks about tweaking the system. The good news? That's all you need to know about blockchain. And you can now envisage the endless possibilities offered by this technology. And that's when blockchain really gets interesting. When you consider how this technology will revolutionize the global interactions between humans, I insist it's not only about the financial industry getting scared out of its mind because banks, as we know them, will probably disappear in a decade. It's about each one of us being able to trust any human being willing to participate to the network and freely exchange value. In this respect, blockchain proved itself to be a very efficient tool in the endless applications, governance, file and data storage, ID management, crowdfunding, means of payment, and so on. Actually, it's pretty safe to say that every day someone discovers a new way to leverage this technology. Think about digital cryptocurrency, about the Bitcoin. Some of you may ask, well, what's the Bitcoin? But let's assume you know. And then what's the value of the Bitcoin? Well, this is a 10 franc banknote. We all know this piece of paper is worth nothing in itself. But we all agree that I can go buy something worth 10 francs with this simple piece of paper. Actually, we trust central banks who tell us this simple piece of paper is worth 10 francs. That's why cash is often called fiat money. Fiat means trust. Well, on the blockchain, you don't have to trust a bank. You trust an entire network. It's not a centralized entity who decides that a simple piece of paper is worth 10 francs or whatever amount. It's millions of users who check and register each and every transaction in an immutable way and on a constantly updated basis. Now you tell me, which one do you want to trust? I'm sorry. I can share a picture of Satoshi with you tonight. To this date, we don't really know who the author of the Bitcoin white paper is. No human being was really identified. Let's try to guess. Satoshi's obsession with consensus makes me think, maybe a person from Switzerland? Satoshi's extreme intelligence makes me wonder, is it a student or a professor from the EPFL? But when I think about Satoshi's efficiency, about Satoshi's revolutionary idea, about Satoshi's cooperative approach, I know Satoshi is an incredible, daring, amazing woman, and we are waiting for her to show up. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.